Hi, I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Welcome to LCJ Live. Today is Sunday, uh, June 7, 2020. I've got my pal Lightning McQueen here. You may not be able to see his face, but that's because he's got all kinds of frosting and uh, sprinkles on him. That's because Cars is turning uh, 14 on Tuesday. Wow, can't believe it. 14 years of Cars. That is crazy. But uh, we're going to celebrate that and a lot of other big entertainment news and updates for you at this hour. Hope you're doing well here on LCJ Live. I watched The Hangover last night for the very first time. I'm going to give you my thoughts on The Hangover. The original, the first one, 2009, Bradley Cooper, uh, Zach Galifianakis, Ed Helms, Todd Phillips movie. I will give you my thoughts of The Hangover coming up here. So, so stay here because it'll be in just a couple of minutes. Have you been back to the movie theater yet, LCJ says Bob Hall. I have not. I have not been to a movie theater since Thursday, March 12th, when I saw Bloodshot, the Vin Diesel movie. I have been by the uh, drive-in movie theaters, but I haven't been to an indoor theater since March 12th. And they closed in my area, upstate New York, about five days later. I think whenever that Tuesday, Wednesday was, uh, they closed those. Uh, what's up? Yeah, I need a haircut, Siobhan Pota, too. I know, I need a haircut. I know. We're getting there. We're getting there. A lot of stuff's been happening the last couple days, but we're getting there at some point. Sweet Boy Murphy says, you got to see the Hangover sequel. Hangover 2 and 3 are extremely underrated. Uh, well, you want to get into it? Let's get into it. I watched The Hangover for the first time last night, and I think it's a funny movie. I do. I, I went in knowing... Okay, there's some big moments that are going to happen. The Mike Tyson thing's going to happen. You know, some craziness. The baby, all this stuff. And this, things were starting to happen when I was watching Hangover last night. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that happening. I think it's a funny movie. Here's why The Hangover works. It's because, you know, it goes a little far in places and some of the dialogue. But the comedy is actually taken semi-seriously. There is some smart intention with the script with the story, with where the characters go, and with their interactions that really make this work. The pieces come together. Uh, the Mike Tyson, the first Mike Tyson scene. See, I didn't know there were two Mike Tyson scenes. The first one I knew was coming, but when he still punches Zach Galifianakis, it is really funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it all works. It all adds up. The Vegas stuff, the casino scene is really smart. Uh, the Rob Riggle scene with, with the tasing is, is wild and crazy. And I think, as you know, as funny as Galifianakis is and Ed Helms has his moments, he does the piano song, which is actually really good. I think Bradley Cooper's uh, my favorite performance in the film because he plays the you know the the, the straight man in terms of the comedy sense um, and and he does it really well. He's got the snarkiness to him. He's got the uh, realisticness, the 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 grounded nature set in, and yet he still steals the cop car. Uh, Bradley Cooper is great, and I can understand why. Bradley Cooper, you know, immediately his career skyrocketed because of this film. Because he can handle a film that asks him to do certain things and, and switch emotions and be funny, but also be uh, inquisitive and question things and be serious. So props to Bradley Cooper. I understand Galifianakis, you know, became a huge star off of this as well. Went on to do Due Date with Robert Downey Jr., um, and, uh, you know, I saw that film actually uh, several years ago. I thought that was all right, not great. But then the other two Hangover movies and Ed Helms became a bigger star because of this. Ken Jeong, you know, Ken Jeong has a few funny moments in The Hangover. I'm going to be honest. I thought Ken Jeong was going to be in the movie more. Uh, his career went off like crazy. Now, I guess he's in more of Hangover 2, I guess. And a lot of people don't like Hangover 2 and 3. But I already got some comments here uh, that uh, from Sweet Boy Murphy, who's chiming in here. As well as Due Date. Big comedy moments, but true deep heart. You know, the Heather Graham scene with Ed Helms towards the end gives you that uh, feel in the first Hangover movie. And actually, the wedding uh, is well done. You know, again, does it go a little far in places with some of the dialogue and some of the references and some of the attempts at jokes? Yes. And you, you think about some things 11 years after this movie and came out and go... Yeah, I don't know if those would have been in the script 11 years later, but there's only a couple of those moments. Um, and uh, overall, I am impressed with The Hangover. Now, I believe it won the Best Picture Comedy Musical Award from the Golden Globes, and everybody that year went, what? And then Robert Downey Jr. won that year for Sherlock Holmes, actor, comedy, musical. Everybody went, what? But I can understand because Downey Jr. was great as Sherlock Holmes. And now I sort of get why Hangover won, because not only is it a funny movie, but... 
just the concept itself works and the way it plays out works. So uh, those are my thoughts on The Hangover. Maybe I'll get to two and three at some point. We will see. But uh, I enjoyed it. I am pleasantly surprised by The Hangover. What's up, DJ Kev20? Thanks for being here on LCJ Live. Um, speaking of comedy directors, Judd Apatow has a new movie coming out this week called The King of Staten Island. I have seen it. It stars Pete Davidson. I am not allowed to give opinion until tomorrow at noon Eastern. So tomorrow at noon Eastern, look for my rapid review of Judd Apatow's new movie, The King of Staten Island, starring Pete Davidson. I will say this. It is two hours and 17 minutes. Judd Apatow makes long movies. I think Trainwreck was two hours and five minutes. Uh, Funny People was borderline two and a half. Knocked Up was over two hours. 40-Year-Old Virgin just under two hours. Judd Apatow makes long movies. And this one is uh, this one is 217. So... If you're into it, uh, if, if you want to see King of Staten Island this weekend on VOD coming up, get ready because you've got to set aside about two and a half hours of your time. What's up, Brett Harrity? Thanks for being here on LCJ Live. Sweet Boy Murphy, what? RDG as Sherlock might have been the oddest winner I've ever heard. Yeah, it was because even, you know Sherlock Holmes wasn't even a comedy, but the Hollywood Foreign Press likes Robert Downey Jr., and I even think Sherlock Holmes too is better than Sherlock Holmes 1. And if you disagree with me or you agree with me, comment right now here on LCJ Live. Uh, new animated show coming at you this week, or, uh, yeah, coming at you this week on Hulu called Crossing Swords. New LCJ Q&A podcast episode uh, coming at you later tonight with the creators of Crossing Swords from Stupid Buddy Studios. It's going to be on Hulu this Friday. Uh, John Harvatine IV and Tom Root, the guys at Stupid Buddy uh, for Robot Chicken. Uh, that is going to be uh, tonight, uh, new LCJ Q&A podcast episode. Do you think it was the right decision not to have Pete Davidson's dad die in 9-11 in the movie, uh, Sweet Boy Murphy says, for King of Staten Island? Uh, what I will say, because again, I can't say much right now, but I, what I will say is this. He dies, the father w- was a firefighter, dies 17 years earlier. So we're looking at 2003 as the death. Um, and the, that whole element is through the whole film. But, um, yeah, I mean, they just decided they wanted to do certain things with the story you know it was Judd Apatow and Pete Davidson's decisions to to do those things um you know I don't I don't think there's a lot of specific references to 9-11 in the film but um there's a lot about the world of being a firefighter in this movie and that is probably all I can say at least at this moment um all right Critics Choice Real TV Awards nominations are tomorrow at least they're supposed to be I'm a member of the Critics' Choice Association. They have film divisions, TV divisions, all in there. And so real TV awards, kind of like daytime, primetime Emmys, a mixture of various TV different categories. Those nominations will be coming out uh, tomorrow. Tuesday, new documentary short, half an hour. It's great. It's the Rocky one. 40 Years of Rocky, the Birth of a Classic. Narrated by Sylvester Stallone. iTunes and VOD starting Tuesday for $2.99. It is a steal. It is the deal of the year because this is the documentary short main event of the year. If you are a Rocky fan, wow, this is worth it. It's, it's going to go by like that, but you're going to get so much honest commentary from Sylvester Stallone who narrates the film not with traditional narration, but basically he's watching the film with us and he's just saying... I remember when that happened and this went down. He's just talking. It's great. It's it's the most genuine you can get out of somebody. Uh, it's fantastic. 40 Years of Rocky, iTunes and VOD, Tuesday, $2.99. It's great. Totally worth it. Uh, also coming at you Tuesday, I'm going to have a new piece on animationscoop.com with uh, the producer of The Loud House, Karen Malik. Uh, the Loud House is celebrating 100 episodes this week on Wednesday on Nickelodeon, 12 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, an episode called A Star is Scorned. Uh, that's the 100th episode. We talk about 100 episodes of The Loud House. We also talk about their new Daytime Emmy nomination and more. So that is Tuesday at animationscoop.com. Uh, Thursday, new game show on ABC. It is called Don't. It stars Adam Scott. Uh, and it's produced by Ryan Reynolds. So the concept is from Ryan Reynolds. Uh, again, I wrote this on Twitter the other day. I'm, I'm not fully understanding the concept. And I'm not alone here. The concept of the show is if you don't do certain things, you get money. But when Adam Scott says that, then they cut to a bunch of clips of people doing the exact things they're not supposed to be doing. And some of them intentionally not doing things that they're supposed to be doing. So I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be out at 9 o'clock on Thursdays on ABC after Holy Moly and before To Tell the Truth. 
Uh, Millionaire ended uh, this week, so we'll see how the lead-in of Holy Moly is to Don't. I'm sure the folks at Don't and Holy Moly would have loved to have kept the Millionaire lead-in for as long as they could, but, uh, you know, the Millionaire revival was only supposed to be eight episodes, and they actually got nine in. They got a bonus one in, so there you go. Uh, This Friday, there is some competition on online streaming platforms, VOD, uh, with the King of Staten Island. You've got that. You've also got Artemis Fowl coming to Disney+. Plus. This is the Kenneth Branagh sci-fi family film action adventure movie. Josh Gad, Judi Dench. Uh, who else is in it? Uh, Colin Farrell's in it. A lot of people are in it. Artemis Fowl and The Five Bloods, which is the new Spike Lee movie, which is coming to Netflix on Friday. So there is a lot of competition. Three big releases coming at you this week. Uh, on VOD. Also a fourth one, though, uh, that I want to mention, Morona's Fantastic Tale. It is a great, probably the best animated movie of the year so far, from G-Kids, and it'll be released online through virtual cinemas. It's about a dog. It's a dog's life story. It's really well told. Morona's Fantastic Tale. Check that out. MoronaMovie.com. M-A-R-O-N-A Movie.com. We'll give you information on that from G-Kids. It is great. Uh, So yeah, a lot of movies, four movies, coming at you this week on VOD. And then there's more on the way. Uh, A movie called Two Minutes to Fame with Jay Farrow and Cat Williams and uh, some uh, Kiki Palmer. That's coming out on the 16th, I think. Also, going to have, let's see, uh, Eurovision, Will Farrell, Rachel McAdams comedy, Netflix, June 26th. Jungle Beat the Movie, animated movie, June 26th. The Frozen 2 documentary series is coming out June 26th on Disney+. Plus. I had the chance to talk with Mallory Walters, an animator on Frozen 2 yesterday. She's profiled in the docuseries. And uh, Irresistible, the Jon Stewart movie with Steve Carell, coming out June 26th. So there's a lot in the next few weeks uh, to talk about and to get into. And the Daytime Emmy Awards are June 26th. So, yeah, boy, that's going to be a big day when it comes to entertainment. Uh, going to have, as of now, going to have an announcement tomorrow on an exciting new project I'm involved in. I will let you know about that tomorrow. But it's really cool, uh, kind of a limited uh, limited series kind of thing. But uh, I'm going to let you know what that is tomorrow. Look for that announcement on my social media platforms. Uh, got any more questions or comments, send them in here. I'll be on here for another minute or two here on LCJ Live. We do this every Sunday live. Hope you're staying safe, healthy, positive. You're watching films. You're watching TV shows. Shirley is on VOD now. You want my thoughts on that? Uh, also, Becky, uh, which is Kevin James as the villain. Joel McHale's in it. Crazy movie. You want my thoughts on Shirley and Becky? Head over to TooFast2Films.com because Mike Sargent and I, the co-host of the show, fellow film critic, we review Shirley, we review Becky. We actually get into some really good conversations about these films for a couple minutes each. And then we talk about some important films that address racial injustice and everything going on right now. Uh, films like Just Mercy and Fruitvale Station and Clemency. Uh, and uh, 13th, and a, a lot of uh, really important films. One that I, I should have mentioned on the episode that I forgot, and it hit me uh, yesterday, Brian Banks. Brian Banks is fantastic. Aldous Hodge is in Clemency with Alfred Woodard. He's great in that as well. Also in Brian Banks with Greg Kinnear. Uh, if you you got to check that out. Check out that film, Brian Banks. You might have missed it when it came out in theaters last August. Really worth your time. Sweet Boy Murphy wants to know, uh, like Kevin James and Becky out on VOD right now, what comedian would you most want to see take on darker, serious roles? That's a good question, because I was thinking about this the other day. Like, when a, when a comic actor suddenly does drama, like Robin Williams with Goodwill Hunting and, and some other films, who would I want to see take on drama? You know who's good at drama these days is Steve Carell, because he's great on The Morning Show. Um, and... and does some things that you didn't even see in films like The Way Way Back and Foxcatcher. He does some things in the morning show that you really don't expect. What's another one? I think it'd be cool to see Will Ferrell do another drama because Stranger Than Fiction was not necessarily a drama. He was actually Golden Globe nominated for comedy, but it showed a different side of Will Ferrell, and I'd like to see him go down those paths again because he's done a lot of comedy, some funny, some not, and... It would be interesting to see, in this day and age, what his take on a drama would be. So that, that'd be interesting to see Will Ferrell do that. Uh, I'd like to see Eddie Murphy do more drama. Because Dolomite showed that a little bit. A film called Mr. Church really did. I hope people still find Mr. Church. I think it's still on Netflix. Check that movie out. Uh, Eddie Murphy doing more drama would be, would be cool to watch as well. What's up, El King Salva? Hey, thanks for being here on LCJ Live. 
All right, so next Sunday we'll be back. We'll be talking about more of the movies, uh, more of the TV shows that are happening in uh, news in the world of entertainment. Again, special announcement coming at you tomorrow. And a new LCJ Q&A podcast episode later tonight with the creators of the new Hulu stop-motion animated series, Crossing Swords. Happy birthday to Cars, Lightning McQueen, with uh, all the cupcakes and frosting on them. Uh, this is actually a new car, because I collect these cars, and this is one of the new ones, and how appropriate that Cars is turning 14 on Tuesday. I remember when I went to see Cars for the first time. I started to drive in the second time. went to a, a during-the-week screening of it the first time in June of 2006. might have even been today in 2006. I forget which, which day it exactly was, but um, I remember loving it instantly. It is my favorite Pixar movie, and... Uh, I have a family member who's, who's a couple years old, and he's now really getting into Cars, watching it for the first time, and just like loving the races, and loving the colors of the characters, and loving the different characters, and there's so much emotional depth. You talk about emotional depth, there's so much of that in Cars, and people, I think people take Cars for granted, and they just say, oh, it's talking Cars, it doesn't make sense, what is this move, what is the point of all this? Or people say, oh, Cars 3 was the best one, Cars 3 was not the best one. Cars 3 is good, but, but it's, the, it's, the least, it's the least successful of the three. But that's okay. Cars 2 is a completely different movie, but it's still fun. Cars 3 makes some good points and does some good things, but it does not have the, the humor, the heart, the depth, the Doc Hudson. I mean, there's some Doc Hudson in Cars 3, which is good, but it doesn't have, you know, the punch that that first Cars movie gives you. That's why it's still my number one Pixar film and one of my favorite animated movies of all time. And, and uh, I'm so you know, honored to have collected these cars for the last 14 years. Kind of amazing. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at LCJ Reviews, Instagram at LightsCamJackson, and that website is lights-camera-jackson.com. Uh, I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Oh, is this guy's going to order the Back to You DVD for quarantine. Great. Do me a favor when you order it. You know, make sure you watch all 17 of the episodes, not just the first 14. Watch them all, uh, because that last one, Hostage Watch, is the true serious finale of the show. So watch, watch all 17 episodes. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Thank you for watching LCJ Live. I will see you next Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern for more. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive, stay well. Keep watching stuff, and uh, I will see you back here. I'm LCJ. Thank you for watching LCJ Live. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.